I just got done with a really fun call with somebody who had just watched two of our videos on YouTube and then was like, I just wanna to talk to this person. So she came with almost no preconceived notions about what she wanted her house to do. Um, and she, but she had a really good, you know, uh, mind for being open to this kind of thing. She didn't know very much about houses, which I think is like most of us, if you haven't been trained or if you haven't built, you know, I learned from building myself. Like if I didn't get into this field, I didn't know anything about this beforehand. So if that's you, you can get this stuff right. I'm gonna show you exactly how we did this. She is coming from a pretty challenging environment, which is Florida, uh, near West Palm Beach. And what had happened was that her mother had bought this AirThings sensor, the AirThings View Plus, which is a great, I like that sensor a lot. She went to her other daughter's house to measure the radon because she was like, oh, I don't know if radon's a problem. She's like, I got you. She ordered this thing. It then also, aside from radon, measures TVOC and PM 2.5 and PM 1 and temperature and humidity and CO2. So she brought it to my client's house now, her other daughter, and she starts tracking the CO2 and is like, oh my gosh, you're killing your family. This is really bad. And what she was talking about is these like this rash of research projects that has since been uh, refuted by another research project that looked at the controls that all of those research projects used that said that basically CO2 is not as big a deal itself as people were making out. Uh, what is probably happening is that there's something else that's in the air that CO2 is a marker for. All that stuff is like yet to be discovered. So don't worry, there's no science yet on that stuff yet. But what we need to do is just like help her solve her issue. She, what she wants is to make sure that her kids are getting the cleanest air possible. She's in an existing home. It was built in 2000-ish, 2005. They just moved in two years ago. They noticed that like, yeah, some of the rooms are, get a little bit stale or whatever. We also get sick a lot when the kids go back to school. We all pass around the sickness and stuff like that. So. What we're going to do is first look at her uh, few situations. Number one is pick the weather station. This is the great website that I really love called uh, ashray-medio.info. Uh, ashray I use this calculator basically every single day. Uh, so we pick her closest weather station. We find out that the uh, wettest temperature that we're having to deal with is at 84 degrees. I want to know before we proceed with all the rest of the stuff, how big the house is. It's 2,800 square feet. How high the ceilings are. They're all flat nine foot ceilings. So we've got a total volume of around 25,000 cubic feet per hour. First thing we always do, because you gotta know how much air leakage is coming into this thing, is divide the volume by 60. And that will give you your one ACH 50 number. Now there, there's a, what I'm gonna tell you now is that this house was built again in 2005. In 2005, there was no standard in the building code for using a blower door for air tightness. There was no requirement for air tightness. The air tightness was what it was. Like, we're gonna build you a house, it's gonna be as airtight as it's gonna be, and by the way, you don't wanna build too tight because a house needs to breathe, is what they used to think. So probably her house would have been at about seven ACH 50. Uh, and that means that we take 25,000 and whatever, um, divide by 60 times seven. And that gives you a number that's around 2940, as you can see here. This is the assumption that I'm making because she hasn't had a blow order test yet. And you should have one because this is how we know for a fact. The other way around this, by the way, is if you take the square footage of your house and you just say that that square footage would also be the CFM 50, one CFM 50 per square foot of conditioned floor space is another way to kind of like say, if this house has had no air sealing attention paid to it at all, then it's probably about that. So 2,800 square foot house, 2,800 CFM 50. You can see that that's right around the line of where we're at with the 7 ACH 50 assumption also. So, so we know that it's gonna be somewhere in here because nobody's really done any work on this. So I assume 2,940, which is 7 ACH 50. Now I wanna know on the most humid day, because as you may have guessed, in Florida, the problem with getting fresh air to you know, get rid of some of the CO2, is that you? it comes along with this really high penalty for humidity. And that's almost year round. And I'm from Florida, I'm a seventh generation Floridian. Uh, my daughter is eighth generation Floridian. So uh, she was also born there, we, even though we don't live in Florida now. The, the, the issue is that Florida has a very complicated relationship with air tightness because it has a very complicated relationship with ventilation. So how are we gonna do this? Because when she opens the windows, she can get air, but it's gonna be loaded with pollen or loaded with grass clippings or loaded with humidity or all of the above. 
uh, and that's not worth the price. Like it's the benefit does not outweigh the risk at that point. So uh, she just wants to do some stuff. The first thing that she did was, of course, turn on her her um, fan, her air handler in the heat pump, uh, all the time on. And she noticed that that actually hurt her humidity, and that does happen sometimes. And I'm, I know that I'm kind of like getting around, going around and around in circles, but there's a lot of backstory on all this stuff that, of course, you can explore the 900 videos on our channel to get more into. Let's keep on going with this. What I'm doing here is I want to know on the most humid day how much air leakage we think we're going to have. So we've got 2940 CFM 50. That's your 70 CH 50. We have a building height of about 20. This is red calc, by the way. This is free. Most of the work that I do at my hourly rate is using free calculators that I use on the YouTube channel to show people how to do for free. Um, so please go and use these. This is what that was why I'm showing you these things. Um, so we can see that uh, on this day, when 84 degrees outside set, uh, temperature, 74 degree inside temperature, I asked her. That's what she said that they set it at in the summertime. We have about 71 CFM coming in from air leakage. And so, uh, and, and by the way, they give you also the heat gain in BTUs per hour. That's very nice of them. What we want to do now is figure out uh, what we do about this. So we've got 71 CFM coming in from outside all the time from air leakage. We also want to know how much mechanical fresh air we need because of course what happens when the the outdoor temperature is 84, we're getting 71 CFM. If the outdoor temperature is the uh, temperature that is the max 99% temperature, that's 91, we're going to get 99 CFM. And if the temperature is the, ma is the 99% coldest temperature, we're going to get 138 CFM. So which one do we pick? And that's why we kind of want to target the specific day that we're talking about, that's the worst case day for whatever it is. And the worst case day for humidity, as we can see on this weather map here, is right here, dehumidification uh, max total, 99%, is on an 84 degree day with 143 grains of moisture per pound. So now we can go in and um, figure out what the fresh air target is. For this house that's got a 7 ACH 50, it's not been air sealed, do we even need any air brought in on purpose. And of course, the answer to that is on this day, we don't. On a 45 degree day, we're getting tons of outdoor air. But on a 74 degree day, when there's 74 degrees outside, 74 degrees inside, and there's no wind, the numbers are zero. So how do we on this day, when number one, there is no stack effect. Uh, and so uh, we have a problem with very little air leakage coming into the house. Number two, the air conditioner is not running on this day. If the sun's not shining, then it's not going to kick on. And therefore, there's no dehumidification that's going to happen either. And on a 74 degree day in Fort Lauderdale or West Palm Beach, we got a, we, there's a problem with humidity, right? Because the ocean is right there. And also, if she was to take the step to help herself by opening windows there is no guarantee that any air will go through the window because there's no incentive for it. There's no wind. There's no sack effect. The window, it just, the air might just stay there. You can hear the outside, but you're not actually receiving any of that air. So what we want to do is make sure that on this day, we can get not zero in infiltration. We want to force some air leakage. So we come over here. We could say that the uh, floor area and all the stuff that we already picked out, there are six people living in this house, by the way. Three of them are children. Uh, we can see that we've got a required mechanical ventilation rate of 12. That's accounting for 129 CFM that we need in this house every minute of every day. Uh, we can take credit for 91 CFM through air leakage. We can take credit for another 26 CFM through filtration because they do have a whole bunch of portable filter units all over this house that are HEPA and carbon loaded. So we only need 12 CFM. And if I was to back this off to like, let's just say that she could get her house air sealed down to do, or, or it already has happened, to 5 ACH 50. That'll make this number go up. So that's 2100 CFM 50. Uh, now we need 38. Okay, so what we just kind of discovered is, based on the calculation, and in general, this ASHRAE 62.2 calculation is a little bit aggressive. It gives you a little bit more fresh air than you technically need to maintain a pretty good air quality. And a lot of us know that because we've tested it in our own homes. So we need somewhere between 12 and 40 CFM every minute of every day. In Florida, 
What does that look like? Well, there's two things that we could do. If she didn't already have two dehumidifiers in the house that are running, then we could say, well, a ventilating dehumidifier might do the trick, but there's another machine that would probably do a pretty good job, which is this. This is your cheapest ERV that you can buy. It's about 600 bucks. And uh, I generally don't recommend this kind of thing because it can't function in a house that needs an ERV because it's so airtight. You can't pull out of the bathroom and deliver to another room, the fresh air to another room. You're gonna like, this thing is a one point system. So it's gonna pull air out of the room that it's in, give air to the room that it's in. Best case scenario is we put this thing in the hallway, in the ceiling of the hallway where the floor one return is. So it's not jutting up into the attic. It's all inside condition space, but it's somewhere close to where the air is getting grabbed by the main air handler and being distributed around the house. So this thing can do uh, I think it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 CFM. So we can do exactly what her house needs with this machine. It'll cut the humidity gain in half. It'll cut the, the temperature gain in half. And that's mostly what we're worried about. We're not too worried about dryness in the wintertime or coldness in the wintertime. Uh, and then also it filters. So for all those reasons, this is a much superior way to go over opening windows. And then last thing that I do generally is I'm gonna hook her up with the, the list. This is the list of scientific HVAC professionals. If you're a scientific HVAC professional and you're watching this and you're not on this list, please get on the list. This is free to join, it's free to look at. It's just a giant Excel spreadsheet uh, on, on crack and it's basically just got everybody laid out by state and by city. Um, I don't get any money from any of these people. I also don't know them, so please don't, call me and say, hey, I thought you said this guy was great. If you do have complaints, please do let me know because I do kick people off that list. Um, but that's an honor system. I believe in math. I believe in science. I'm an HVAC installer. Boom, you're on. So I hope that this has been interesting uh, for those of you who are in humid climates. This stuff is really not that, it's not rocket science. You want to think through the five factors of ventilation, which I'm linking a screen, you know, a video on screen now about explaining that. I use the same approach on every single house, no matter how old it is, no matter who lives there. You just kind of refine the targets for all this stuff based on the, the expectations of the people who live there or the, the situation that you're in. Comment below if you have anything else to add. Like, subscribe, tune in next time.